since I've done a video, I know that, and hey, I'm here, and I've never been here before. I mean, I've been here, I've just never shown me, but here I am. Um, so yeah, it's been a long time. Life has been hard. Life's been good in a lot of respects, but this year has sucked so bad. Um, and I don't even know if I want to get into all that. If you are a friend of mine on Facebook, then you know what's going on. I may end up mentioning some things. I may end up uh, getting upset and cutting the video off because I need to cry. So we'll see how it goes. Obviously, I'm not going to show everything I stitched on. I'm not going to show all my finishes because a couple of them I'm not quite sure where they are at the moment and I don't want to go look for them. Um, and I'm saying um way too much, sorry about that. But I will go over some things. I will definitely go over the things that I've been doing since 2018 started and we'll take it from there. So, and I'm also recording from my laptop, which I have never done before. It just seemed like it was a little bit easier than trying to set up the iPod and, or iPad rather, and get the angle right. And I noticed when I tried to look at it because the viewfinder is over here, I was always looking the wrong way. So I didn't want to deal with that. So I did get some finishes. Um, well, I got two finishes from 2000. 16 back from the framer. The first is Summer in Nantucket. So, they're nice and close. So, I love this. It's nice and cushiony. And I think it just looks beautiful. And this is on, I think, 32 count silver mist from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie with all of the call for colors. The other piece I got back from the framer from 2016 was my Halloween Fairy from Mirabilia, and I hate it. I don't hate the framing. The framing is beautiful, but for some reason, and I don't even know why, I left it up to the, to the framer to pick out the matte color, and she pulled the matte color from the wings, and I will try to insert a picture of it here, but I absolutely hate it. So I did talk to the shop owner. They don't frame in my LNS. They send them to a framer. And she said, oh no, we'll just bring it in and we'll have them switch out the mat. And I just haven't gotten around to that yet. Something else that came back from the framer. I finished this last year. I actually finished all three pieces last year. I started it in 2017. This is my Spoot. Let's see if I can get this in frame. This is Spoot from Lizzie Kate. And I had it framed the same way that it was framed in my LNS. The only thing they did a little differently was they painted these squares, uh, like a turqu turqu I can talk, a turquoise aqua-ish color. And I think it is fabulous. There's a couple of mistakes. I didn't care enough to go back and fix them. And I just think it is fabulous. So that is spooked. I did get the Christmas mystery stitch along last year, but I never started it. And there's reasons and stuff. So now we will go on to whips. I have a whole pile of stuff beside me. This is stuff that I always have really organized when I do a video. It's all right in front of me. I have the, the iPad over top of me and I just kind of, but when I was getting ready to do this, everything's all out of order. So, what do I want to show you first? I started, I jumped on this train, Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. I saw that Heather, the Springfield stitcher, was stitching this and I fell in love. And I am so out of order with floss tube and I'm so behind and I will never, ever catch up, I don't think. So, I don't know what anybody's really doing right now. There's only a couple people that I'm up to date on. But this is as far as I got. This is, I'm hoping this is close enough and you can see it. But this is uh, page one. I'm not quite done with it. That was about two or three days worth of progress. 
That is Autumn on Lazy Bear Mouth. And I love it. Love it, love it. Something else I started about the same time. I think these were all October stitches. I think. I don't remember. Uh, those earthly treasures. Sorry for the glare. Let's see if I can unglare it. Well, man, this is a problem, you guys. Ooh, you are always. Oh, I'm sorry about the glare, but anyway, this is Plum Street Sampler Earthly Treasures. I didn't get very far on it. I think I stitched on it for one day. It's all wrinkled. Sorry. And this is how far I got. And this is a really cute quote. Oh, look, there's a piece of thread in front of there. Sorry, you probably couldn't see it anyway. Dwell not on earthly treasures, nor... I can't read it with my glasses on. Nor covet or envy or pout. Thou entered this world and brought nothing in and will carry with thee nothing out. And I just saw on a website, Paulette wrote that. So that's really adorable and dark. And I love that. So I only worked on that, I think, for a day. And then I worked on... <clears throat> This was in November. This was Autumn U from Plum Street Samplers. I love this. I love the colors in it. And I don't know why I stopped stitching it. Oh, um, what is that stitched on? Earthly Treasures is stitched on the called for fabric, which is vintage pearl barley. It's 32 or 36, I don't know. This is on 32 count French roast linen. I had this in my stash. I think I bought it one of those times that one, two, three stitch had a little bit of a clearance on fabric, but that's as far as I got. And then kind of all hell broke loose in my family. And well, first I had to start on my mother's Christmas gift, which I didn't finish because reasons. I could backtrack. No, I'm not going to. Okay. Well, in the interim, I had weight loss surgery in October. And you're probably looking going, gee, you're kind of heavy for having had weight loss surgery. I'm actually down about 99-ish pounds, something like that. So I've lost a baby calf. It is not an easy fix. In fact, I am only losing weight at about the same rate that I was before I had the surgery. I lost about 40 pounds before the surgery. And then since then I have, yeah, about close to 60 pounds. So I'm not right on track. I think it's going too slowly, but my dietitian and my exercise physiologist and my surgeon all think that everything is going just fine and that I don't want to go any faster than I'm going. They're quite happy with my progress. I mean, I thought it would, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I thought it would be easier. And I've watched people that I know have the surgery and regain their weight. That is not something that I'm going to do. You have to make lifestyle changes or this won't work. I've done absolutely nothing. I've eaten nothing since while well, my surgery was in October, I started the process at the end of May. And then I started to diet and exercise. Well, I started to diet mid-June um, and follow, I think it was a 1200 calorie diet. And then with working with a dietitian, so I can tell you something that I didn't know in all these years of dieting and yo-yoing and up and down and everything else, I never really understood the importance of a uh, food journal. Worked wonders. Calories are not calories are not calories. It is 98% nutrition, 2% exercise. And that is agreed upon by everyone at my doctor's office and they are wonderful they are a well-oiled machine and they've taught me so much and yes you do need to have purposeful movement 
you need to kill yourself working out to lose weight. Uh, they like us to have, now that we're post-op, they like me to have 150 minutes of activity a week. And I was doing really well with that up until about two weeks ago. But um, that's, again, because, like I said, my family kind of got punched in the teeth in November. Which, I'm going to segue back to where I was. Sorry about that. Uh, so this was going to be one of my mother's Christmas gifts. This is, what is this called? Gingerbread Trio by Little House Needleworks. There we go. Very, very cute. I'm stitching this on 28 count butterscotch cookies from Hand Dye Fabrics by Stephanie. There is a thread hanging. Remember that. Everything's wrinkled. I'm sorry about that too. This is as far as I got. Actually, I almost done. I made a mistake up in here, I believe. And then I just, and I was on a roll and I just kind of got disgusted and said, well, you know, oops, yeah, I made a mistake and I will pick that out at home because I was stitching on it on my lunch breaks at work and then I will get back to it. And, well, okay, I'll just say it. In November, my aunt was diagnosed with a very um, aggressive form of cancer. And it was in her lungs, in her liver, in her spleen. Uh, it was stage four. It had metastasized. Uh, I was very close to my Aunt Mary. And she's only 12 and a half years older than I am. She was the baby of my mother's family. So it was very difficult on my mother and my aunts going through all of that. And she passed. Um, passed on the 22nd of February so that was kind of the gut punch but within a month of that another aunt passed away in her sleep and my cousin's wife also passed away um, with a complication after surgery so it's just been all kinds of crap going on around here so that's why I haven't been exercising recently but I'll get back to it I will uh, I went to a finishing class that was held at my LNS and there were pieces. I'm going to insert a picture of the finished pieces here. Ish. And because I, I don't know where they are, but they're so cute. And one was from Kathy from Hands on Design, Kathy Haberman, and the other piece was from Beth at Summer House Stitch Works. And they were, no, this isn't one of them. That's just a pattern that Beth gave us, and I'm not even going to show that because I think it's exclusive to us. So, but they're so cute. And the finishing class was, was a lot of fun, and I met some really nice people there. And I made a complete fool out of myself because I can't sew with a sewing machine. I signed up to take a sewing class at Joann's, and then with everything going on, I forgot about it, and I, I didn't go. So I missed out on that. So I guess I'll sign up again. I don't know if they'll make me pay again. We'll see. And then for Stitch Mania, I wanted to work on the, on the, I guess the monthly stitch along is going by like the color of the birthstone of the month. So Garrett, coffee stitcher, was jumping in and doing um, the Clouds Factory Astrology came through the stars I think it's called through the stars and I thought hey I am gonna copy him and I'm going to do it too so this is 32 count gothic fabric and I changed it up a bit I'm stitching this with um, silver petite treasure braid I'm not a big fan of gold and I wanted to bling it up I don't know if you're getting the sparklies or not but they're they're very sparkly I started this this is Aquarius, which is where the stitch along starts, and so I'm already behind, but that's okay. I will get back to it. I just got sick of working with the petite treasure braid. Um, another stitch along. Oh, 
I should add on January 1st I did New Year New Start and this is something that was given to us by Kathy from Hands on Design she gave us a little kit to make this adorable little ornament plaid tightening so I stitched that up on January 1st and fully finished it so that was my first finish I have another ornament that I stitched for Vanna's stitch along in Little House Needle Works for the ornaments and that is upstairs right now and I'm not upstairs so you're not going to see that. Something else I started. This was actually a Christmas gift from my parents which was awesome. I had ordered it and then I told my dad, because I wanted to do Stitch from Stash, but I ordered the whole thing. And I said, hey dad, are you guys giving me any money? Because, I mean, I'm old. What are you going to give me for Christmas? And he said, maybe. Why? And I said, because there's this thing I want from to Stitch, and it's like 100 bucks. So if you're giving me 100 bucks, we'll just say it's from you and Mom. So it's from Mom and Dad for Christmas. But it is the Farmhouse Christmas. You've seen this, everybody and their brother is stitching it. So I started this. I didn't start it till this month, just with everything. This is on, I started it on Colonial Parchment Cashel from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie, which this fabric is perfection. I love it, it's beautiful. So this is my start with the called for threads. And I don't know if anybody is seeing that problem that I am seeing, but the bamboo, you, you totally, I can't see it. And I kind of was stitching the border and I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to move into the barn and I'm going to see if once I get a little more of the bamboo in, I can see it better. Because doing a floss toss, it looked fine. It showed up perfectly, but stitching it, not so much. So I asked a couple of friends, I asked Heather and I asked my friend Carrie, who I met at, at the uh, finishing class, I said, hey, what do you guys think? Here are my options. Pick out the bamboo and just replace it with B5200. And anybody who knows me knows that I hate to fraud. I hate it. And my other option is continue on and you know but I'm at a point where I can start over on a different fabric and everybody's telling me you know I think it looks okay I mean and it doesn't look terrible looking at it now it, it looks okay but I just wasn't happy with it I also wasn't happy with the coverage on the barn on the red I don't know if you can see that this is two over two but I, I can see through there and nobody looks at our work as critically as we look at it ourselves, but that just really bothered me. So I thought, well, I'm going to switch it to a 32 count. So I pulled this out of my stash and I restarted it yesterday. This is on, if you can see through there, I can do this. This is on 32 count Belfast uh, Lapis from Under the Sea Fabrics, and I love it. I like it so much better. So I would like to stitch on that until I finish at least that block. I'll show you one more whip. Although there's more, but this is what I'm going to show you. I was watching uh, McKenna, Stitching in Sequence, everybody knows McKenna. I was watching her latest video and she was talking about the Bewitch Stitches group on Facebook. So that was right up my alley, so I joined that. And I pulled this out. They're having an Edgar Allan Poe sale right now. And uh, I had started this in Stitch Mania two years ago, and I had Quoth and R. So I pulled this out, and then I stitched Quoth the Raven, started the Nevermore, and I started to outline. Now that guy's going to be all black, the crow. So this is on. 30 count old Salem linen from the primitive hair and this is Edgar Allan Poe and I might try to insert a picture of it finished but you guys can always 
you know, go look at it if you want to. I love the primitive hair, and I was, I've been wanting to stitch on this piece, so I did. And now we go to stash. So I've committed to do stitch from stash. So I'm just spending all the money. And I have now failed miserably at stitch from stash. Market happened, so my order from Stitch and Frog just shipped. So that will be coming. I stayed away from my LNS at least, but what did I buy? Oh, I won something. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but ABC Stitch Therapy had a giveaway from, this was just really nice, of Dear Santa from Lizzie Kate, and I won that giveaway last year. So they sent, I got two pieces of uh, lamb's wool, 13 by 18, from Wichelt, which it's kind of, I think this is the stuff that everybody complains about. It's a little bit rough. Yeah, it is. It's a little stuff. It's pretty. And they sent the pattern and I didn't even look to see what this, I don't know if it calls for DMC. It calls for weeks. They sent the DMC, which is fine. And I may pull, I have some of these and I may just pull from my stash. I may use the DMC, I don't know. And then they sent, this is, there's a card. And it's just a nice little thank you card for participating in the giveaway. So that was nice, and a business card. And I know nobody likes crinkling. My, I'm in my bedroom. I went all over the house looking to see where I had decent lighting in this house. And the really, the only place I can get away, the dining room's too bright, the living room's not bright enough where I would want to sit. I sat at all four chairs in the dining room and they were all the same way. And then I gave up. My hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie Fabric of the Month again is upstairs and I am not so that is going to stay up there. But here is my fabric of the month from Under the Sea Fabrics. This just arrived as always. This is in 32 Count Belfast and it is called Galen. Oops, that's showing up pretty well. It's really pretty. It's got some uh let's see if you can see it got some pretty purples and things in there. It's a really pretty color. That thing is begging for a mermaid, right? Not like I don't have enough mermaids. I'm also still getting my stitchy box, but I know you've seen those. I um, I canceled my hand-dyed fabrics by Stephanie, but she keeps invoicing me and I keep paying it without thinking. So I'm going to have to let her know. I'm no longer doing that. I joined the... This is where I went off the rails. So I joined the Tempting Tangles Sail Away Something About Wind Stitch Along. Mystery Stitch Along that's coming up. It was five bucks. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that's, well, I made one purchase in my planner stuff is all right on top of this. So let's see if I can. Okay. And my planner stuff crinkled my patterns, but that's okay. So, Trisha made me go off the rails first. But Ships Manor had, they did the thread for the stitch along. So here are the threads. I haven't actually seen much of a sneak peek yet. Catch the wind. Is that what it's called? I don't remember. Somebody I'm sure will, will let me know what it's called. So here this is. Isn't it pretty? And I have no idea. I have no idea what it's going to look like, so I don't know what fabric I want to stitch it on. 
think I need to de-stash some of my fabric. We'll see. And then when I ordered that, I also got March Threads of the Month. So they're really pretty. And some patterns, which they're digital patterns. So if I think about it, I will um, tack pictures of those onto the end of the video. And then I thought, well, I really fell off the rails. So one, two, three stitch. I wanted this. So I ordered it. And I ordered the weeks because, you know, why not? So here are their mess. Here are, woo, got four. Here are the weeks. And I want to start this like yesterday. But I'd like to get, um, I'd like to at least get Farmhouse Christmas, the little red barn done. But here are the threads. Ooh, one's upside down. So there we go. Aren't they pretty? I love them. And what else did I buy? Oh, this was on clearance. No wonder it's on clearance, man. I could file my nails with this stuff. 32 count touch of gray linen. Wow. Actually, it would probably work for this. And that is a fat, is that a fat quarter? Yeah, it's a fat quarter. It seems bigger than a fat quarter. Yeah. So I think they still have some of that, if anybody's looking. So Trisha got me with selling these soda stitch patterns. And again, Garrett, I love me my mermaids, so I ordered this when it came into stock, and it is called something, A Legend of the Blue Sea. She's so pretty. I'm going to start her too. And Princess Mermaids. How cute are those? I, I try to stay away from cutesy cutesy, but I fail. I also got the Guardians of Notre Dame. Stitch along from Angleside Imaginarium. I have not started it yet. I want to. And again, I'm trying to commit to keeping up with one thing. I'm not doing too well with it. I was going to go to to uh, the floss tube retreat last. When was that? Was it October? It was October. With everything going on and my surgery and food prepping and it was a lot with all of that and then I hadn't booked a flight I had a room but I hadn't booked my flight and then the flights were outrageously expensive and it was six hundred dollars and the flights are crazy right now anyway but six hundred dollars for two days to just no so I didn't go and I'm sad that I didn't go and everybody looked like they had a great time and I wish I had been there but I'm okay with my decision to have not gone. And so I am going to the Floss Tube Retreat in May in New Jersey. So I will be there and I can't wait to see everybody and meet everybody. I'm also going to the, re the local retreat that um, Cross Stitch Club, it's a Cross Stitch Club, Faye from Cross Stitch Club throws that I attend, attended it the last two years. So I will be doing that, and what else is going on? I don't know. I think, that, I think that's about all. Oh, as far as my eyes go, I was supposed to have my eye surgery on Valentine's Day, and I finally had opted, agonized about the decision, decided to do the PRK surgery, finally, and had to wait until one of my coworkers also had weight loss surgery right after I did. So I had to wait for her to come back to work because we were super crazy busy and my boss was freaking out about all of it. So I waited for her to come back, scheduled the surgery. I went in for my pre-op appointment.
was this right? It was in January. Yeah, it was before. It was right after my first aunt passed away, I think. And so I wasn't in the best of moods anyway, but the appointment was, we knew it was going to be extended. It was going to be a few hours. And I was there, I think, for almost five hours. They were doing measurements and this and that and the other thing. And things weren't measuring out right. And then they decided they were going to check my, um, what can I think? Anyway, they were going to check another part of my eye to see if it wasn't just corneal of some, because they couldn't get it to 2020. They couldn't get my left eye where it needed to be. And they didn't understand it. And apparently the repeated corneal erosions have made my astigmatism way worse than it ever was before. Everything is blurry out of my left eye. And that's why, if you saw, I took my glasses off to read something I can read. I still have my nearsightedness so I can take off my glasses and I can read this no problem. Uh, but with driving and everything, I'm still legally allowed to drive, but they can only get me to about 2030 and this eye, forget it, it is just a big old blur. Because of that, he doesn't, he feels that it is changing too rapidly to proceed with the surgery right now. He said I could have it. I'll lose that nearsightedness, so taking the glasses off to read isn't gonna work anymore. And it's funny because at work I'm watching a sleep I'm reading a sleep study. I'm reading two sleep studies at work and I'm sorry. Oh I have lost two veggie nose. Yay. Uh I'm gonna drink. One second, sorry. My hot chocolate is now cold, but you know, I was going to lose that because they were doing both eyes and if I got an infection, I could lose my eyesight altogether. I could lose my eyeballs. Um, just the, this whole horror story that he was laying out for me. So I agreed with him that we would wait six months. Now. The appointment is scheduled for the day I get back from my summer vacation in July when I'm going to Cuba with some friends. We're taking a cruise, assuming that we can still go to Cuba when July rolls around. But I'm going to Cuba and then I get back and you have to do this, this exam, this big hours long exam within a month, I think, of your surgery. And there's no way I'm going to be able to do it because it's summer vacation, so I'm going to have to change that appointment anyway. But I think I've pretty much resigned myself to, I'm just not going to have the surgery. I, he doesn't think that I will be able to get away without glasses anyway. It's out of pocket. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some more research into the hyperbaric chamber treatment for this condition. And I'm going to push for it and see what, if anything, I can get insurance to agree to. So that would be awesome if they would agree to something like that. Not having as many erosions as I was. Some of it, I think, maybe my diet, now that sugar is gone, uh, I'm not having nearly as many erosions as I was, but I'm still having them. What else is going on? Um, I'm doing stitchy fit. Tracy P's group. You know, I haven't done anything in three weeks. Sorry, Tracy and the rest of the stitchy bit and stitchy bit stitchy fit people. And there's also a group that I'm in, um, my Harry Connick Jr. friends we have. It's called Burn It Up. One of my friends is a a uh, trainer. So she's right there giving us all really good advice. And I know with the routine, with the weightlifting routine that I do at my gym, uh, the exercise physiologist at my physician's office, what he said was, wow, that's a lot. You know, you don't have to do all of that all at one time. It's a lot. So you can go in and you can work out there so many times a month. I don't even know how many. He said, hey, if you want to come in, you know, call and make an appointment and come in and work out with me. And we'll see, you know, what we can get done. And then we also have a 5K 
that is just for all of the weight loss patients that go to the office. It's private. You don't have to pay or anything, and no one else can come except for anybody who's in our support group. And, you know, like, I could have my boyfriend, or I could have my parents, or whatever, friend, anybody in my support group, uh, come and, you know, walk with me, cheer me on, whatever. But it's just for us, and I know Ryan said that that is the highlight of his year. Now, there's no way I'm running. I, I don't think I'd even run if chased. There, it wouldn't, no, I, I don't run. And not after having broken my ankles and everything, but I'll walk it, you know. I'm walking a lot anyway. Even gotten some plantar fasciitis through this whole process. I think I've had it before and didn't realize I had it before. It's also a fibro thing. So it could just be from having fibro. Oh, one other thing I did. I inherited my aunt's cat. Her name is Scarlett. And she, she is in the other room right now. She is acclimating okay. She's been here for two weeks today. She mostly hangs out in the basement. During the day, she always is in the basement. Now, if somebody is upstairs after my dog goes to bed, because she sleeps in my parents' bedroom at night, then she will go upstairs. My cat, Ella, hisses at her and growls. She is really not happy with the whole situation. And she's 12. She'll get over it, but she's 12. And Scarlett really doesn't seem to care anymore what Ella thinks. She's she's fine with that, but she, Winnie really freaks her out. And Winnie's little. I mean, they're the same size. And they came face to face the other day. It was so cute. Where Winnie woke up when Scarlett was upstairs, and Scarlett got to the basement door, but Winnie had had blocked the door. It was adorable. And they were just kind of standing there, and Winnie's like, "Hi." I'm your best friend. My name's Winnie. Let's play. And Scarlett's hissing. And she doesn't, she doesn't have some kind of thing wrong with her vocal cords that she can't meow, but she can still hiss and she can growl a little bit. So she's hissing and, and kind of growling and Winnie's just, her whole body's vibrating. She's so excited like, my name's Winnie. Let's be best friends. And she's hissing and growling. And I kind of came up behind them and Winnie heard me and turned her head and Scarlett did like a a cartoon around the door and then slid back legs went out from under her and down the stairs so hopefully the next time I talk to you they will be getting along better but I need to clean up this mess I want to get back to working on my my project and get that done and I will talk to you guys later have a good weekend